This is the second video in our NMR lecture series. In this video, we'll start to examine the NMR spectra and focus on chemically equivalent hydrogens. If we remember previously, when we look at the NMR spectra, there are four pieces of information that we can gather from it. Today, we're going to focus on the number of signals, which indicates how many types of hydrogens are present in our molecule. So now focusing on our chemically equivalent hydrogens. The number of peaks corresponds to the number of chemically distinct types of protons in our molecule. That is to say that the equivalent protons correspond to the same signal. If we look at some examples we have here, at our first example of propane, we can see our CH3, our CH2, another CH2, and an OH. All the hydrogens in that CH3 are equivalent to each other. So they would give one signal in the NMR spectra. All the hydrogens attached to this CH2 would give one signal in the NMR spectra. This CH2 is different than the first one we just circled. This CH2 happens to have the OH functional group attached to it. That means it's in a very different environment versus the other CH2. So it'll give a separate signal. And then finally, the hydrogen on the OH would give our fourth signal. So looking at propanol, we would expect to see four different signals in the NMR, four different types of peaks. When we're examining our molecules, it's very important to look for planes of symmetry or mirror planes within the molecule. For example, with our diethyl ether, I can draw a mirror plane right through the oxygen. And then the first half is going to be the exact same as the second half. Those two sides mirror each other and look identical. That means the hydrogens on each side are equivalent to each other. So that would mean this CH2 is the exact same as that CH2. I would get just one signal for both of these CH2s. And then this CH3 is the exact same as that CH3. So I would get a second signal for both of those CH3s. That means diethyl ether here would give me just two peaks in the NMR spectra. So we can look at our next one of isopropanol in a similar fashion. If I look at isopropanol, I can draw a mirror plane right through the oxygen in the central carbon. This means that the two methyl groups are identical to each other. Those two methyl groups will give me one signal. This central CH will give me another signal. And then finally, the OH will give a third signal. So isopropanol here will give us three peaks in our NMR spectra. So you can see how you always have to look for mirror planes when you're looking at your compounds. Also, if you have a carbon that's single bonded, that carbon can rotate freely, so all the hydrogens on that carbon become equivalent to each other. Looking at our final compound here, phenol, we can see that there's a mirror plane right through the oxygen and right down the middle of the ring. This means that the ring gets split in two. So our first half is the exact same as our second half. So that means that CH and that CH are equivalent to each other. And then this CH is the exact same as that CH. The third CH that's para to the phenol will give me a third signal. And then finally, the phenol will give a fourth signal. So if I look at the NMR phenol, I should see four signals or four peaks. So now let's look at a couple more examples for practicing, particularly focusing on aromatic rings. So if I look at these three different substitution patterns for my dichlorobenzene ring, I can see that I have the patterns for ortho, meta, and para. So we're going to examine here the different so we're going to examine here the different types of hydrogens on an ortho, med, and para when your two substituents are identical to each other. So first, we always have to look for our planes of symmetry within our molecules. For the ortho substitution, we can see that there's a mirror plane right between the two chlorines. This means that this half of the molecule is the exact same as the second half of the molecule. So when you look at that, our hydrogens 
that are ortho to the chlorines are the same. And then the hydrogens that are meta to the chlorine are the same as well. So we should get two peaks. Moving on to our meta substitution. We can see in the meta substitution, there's still a mirror plane that goes right between that carbon right in the middle of the two chlorines. So that means that carbon will give me one peak. The carbon on the other side of both chlorines will give another peak for the hydrogens. And finally, the one at the end will give a third peak. So we should see three peaks in our hydrogen NMR spectra. And then finally, looking at the para, we can see there's a mirror plane right across the ring. And then there's also a second mirror plane that goes right down the, car right down the chlorines. So this means in the para substitution, I have two mirror planes. So what that then causes is that all of the hydrogens on the aromatic ring become identical to each other. So since all of them are identical to each other, we get just one peak in our hydrogen NMR spectra. So a couple takeaways. When we're looking at aromatic rings that contain two of the exact same substituents, we can see that there's always going to be a mirror plane. Our ring will always have a mirror plane in it, so we'll always see less peaks in the NMR than there are hydrogens in the compound. And then second, with the pair of substitution, make sure you look for two mirror planes. Our molecules can have more than one mirror plane within them. Let's look at a couple more examples. One, where the two substituents are the same still, and the second one where we have two different substituents. In our compound here, oxyline, that has two of the same substituents, we can see there's a mirror plane right between our two methyl groups. So this makes the methyl groups equivalent to each other. So they would give one signal in our NMR spectra. A second signal will come to the hydrogens that are ortho to it, and the third signal would come from the hydrogens that are meta. So oxyline gives us three peaks in our NMR spectra. And then looking at our final example here, we can see we have a fluoro substituent group and a nitro substituent group. Since we have two different substituent groups, there's no mirror planes in this molecule. So that means all the hydrogens are different from each other on the aromatic ring. So we can get one type of hydrogen for the carbon that's in between the two substituent groups, a second, a third, and a fourth. So this would end up with having four peaks in our NMR spectra. One thing to note, it doesn't matter how you start to number the different hydrogens around the ring, just as long as you can keep track of the types of hydrogens. I've been writing out the different ones here just so everybody can have a visualization of it. But if you can keep track of them in your mind, you don't have to write out each one like this. One thing we can see from these two rings here is when the substituents become different from each other, we lose some of that symmetry. When we lose that symmetry, we start to have more peaks in the NMR spectra.